In today's video, we will be replacing a tool that I should have replaced a long time ago because it's been broken a while. We'll get into why I've been waiting to replace it. But that would be this here, Astro Tools 1427 Rivet Nut Installer. Uh, for those of you who don't know, when you have a piece of thin sheet metal or box tubing, for that matter, or just about anything thin that you can't put traditional tap through to create threads into it um, you have limited choices as far as I as far as I can see uh, one would be uh, friction drill it so instead of actually drilling it and removing the material you friction drill it which pushes the material through then you got to run a tap through it uh, you have another choice would be like a speed nut uh, those clip-on nuts that go on the sheet metal um, they stink because you know you usually one or two time use and then the thing breaks or what my preferred method would be would be a uh, rivet nut. Uh, people call these nut certs, uh, riv nuts. All of them are basically basically apply to this, and it's just basically a um, threaded cylinder that you would put inside well, the right hole. Put inside the right hole there. You crimp it down, and then it pinches onto your piece of sheet metal, and um, yeah, now you got a piece of threaded sheet metal. Now, as far as rivet nuts go, I mean, I, I don't use them quite as quite as often as, like, say, a um, fabricator would. If you're if you're building uh, uh, things, the thing I would use this the most for would be installing uh, uh, rear view mirrors on forklifts. You got that box tubing. Toyota has an option. You get the mirrors, and some people decide they want mirrors. Sometimes the old rivet nuts break because the operators are constantly smacking them and breaking them off. And um, yeah, I mean that's about it. I mean I do have an occasion where I'll have to do a install for like blue lights. Um, comes to mind a, a, a company needed. They bought a bunch of little little uh, three wheeler mechanics carts, and they company policy was you had to have blue lights on something like that uh, a rivet nut would have been nice because you know you, you punch a hole through the steel and then you got to run a nut and bolt through it whereas to the rivet nut you could just kind of punch it through the other side and uh crimp it down and then yeah bob's your uncle you got you got yourself a threaded piece of sheet metal uh as far as structural goes these aren't structural type fasteners i mean for one you're just you're pressing them into sheet metal so it's only as it'll it can only be as good as the sheet metal which is uh not not that great but um yeah they're not like i said they're not structural most of the time it's for hanging things headlights uh tail lights um beacon lights little control panels things for people on their forklifts for me at least where they would put their scanner a little scanner holder and again uh with the uh the mirrors now this particular one I, i've had for uh, probably the better part of five six years um yeah, and I mean, it served me fairly well. Problem was, I was one of the only guys who actually had one of these, so I was constantly lending it out, and I lent it to somebody who didn't quite know how to use it. They broke it, and I've been kind of just managing along with it, because mostly um, the ones I'm seeing for these are, they're, they're basically all the same thing with little bells and whistles difference, and I didn't want to buy the same thing and have the same problems with it so I've been kind of holding off uh, recently I had to install a couple rivet nuts with this particular one excuse me and um, yeah I said let me take another look to see if anybody's come up with something different and, and I found it and that would be uh, this guy right here which is the T-O-L-R-E-T -E -T, tool ret uh, TR21 uh, rivet nut installer and as you can see uh, compared to this one um, there, there's a quite a bit of a difference here I mean just in heft alone and uh, one of my big problems with this this style rivet nut installer and I mean I, th I think they even sell these types at, uh, at Harbor Freight um, and what you basically do is you take the rivet nut you stick it in there you kind of plunge this into the hole and then if it's a tough one you kind of got to take bites at it but yeah you plunge it into the hole and you you squeeze this down it compresses the old uh the old rivet nut there and it holds it in place but the problem with this i mean one the the big handles is, is a problem and two when you actually got it inserted you want to keep 
everything kind of flush and lined up, which is one of the problems I have with this, especially if you're in a tight or an awkward position. You want to squeeze the handles down, and as you're squeezing the handles down, the, the head's kind of doing one of these numbers, and then you screw it up, and then you got to start all over again. So I was never a big fan of this style. The only thing worse, in my personal opinion, than this style would be the, the uh, pistol grip traditional rivet installer ones. I don't have one. But anything with those, anything bigger than like a quarter inch, you're you're really cranking on them. So um, yeah, which led me to this one. Um, this particular one, it's just a whole different whole different animal. We got ratchets. We got different way the uh, the rev nuts get installed on the thing. So um, yeah, let's take a quick look down. I'll go over how this thing broke and why I hate it, and uh, take a close look at this thing and run some rivet nuts into some sheet metal so we could see how the thing actually works and uh, yeah let's get into it so let's start off with the old Astro that I had sitting in my truck kind of give you a little bit more in-depth reasons of why I don't like this particular one um, mainly I mean one it's just kind of kind of floppy flimsy you got a little bit of a bend in the handle again from somebody somebody who I lent it to and um, yeah the problem that, that happened with this is this right here now this little thumb screw guy is supposed to be captured on the here there's a little uh, metal insert that's supposed to turn this here flat on this thing so when you're done um, inserting the old rivet nut there you take this guy and you spin it out and it spins this end of it and yeah it's you remove the tool my, my problem is is that this hasn't worked in a couple of years and like I said the ones I'm seeing online I've, I've been seeing online just um, they, they pretty much look like this thing so I didn't see any reason to assume that they would be any different and again that on, on top of how this whole thing works just doesn't appeal to me so uh, yeah I think I'm I'm pretty glad to be done with uh, with uh, this style of rib nut tool. Now getting into the actual star of the show, which is the tool ret, which um, I'm not sure if that's right, but that's what we're going to call it for the rest of the for rest of the video here. Uh, it basically comes as a kit. You get the old blow molded case, which uh, seems like it's decent enough. Um, flip it, flip it open. Little divider in there to keep the anvils away from the tool. Um, you get an instruction manual, which is pretty sparse, but I mean, we don't really need all that. And you also get a, well, you get the tool for one. So let's get that out of there because we're going to need it for later on. An assortment of rivet nuts that you could buy. These things, depending on how many you buy, you could get them for as little as, oh, I don't know couple of cents each depending on how many you buy of course and then you got the actual uh, anvils that you would put inside of it so let's pick the M8 out of here because we're going to use that in our little demonstration and the M10 out of here um, it also puts the size on here as well as on here and get these out of here so let's take a look at the actual tool and uh, this is it in all its glory here um, basically you got two nice grippy rubble ha rubber handles which I kind of like uh, the anvil right here which goes through it uh, we'll, we'll show how that comes on and off in, in a bit but um, and that goes there and uh, you have a little ratcheting handle down here so when you're tightening and loosening it gives you a nice clearance so you don't need all this to kind of go back and forth and tighten and loosen the thing and again it's just I mean comparison wise to the to the old Astro and as far as how that thing needed to the kind of clearance you needed for this thing to work I mean you could obviously see why why this would be a more more appealing option to me and now getting into how the thing actually works uh, off camera I took this little piece of plate steel drilled what I would consider appropriate holes for for the size of a uh, insert that we're going to be using there's no real rules as far as what size to use me personally for as many years as I've been using this type of thing I just kind of get a hole and I drill it closest one that'll 
make it so these inserts don't have a whole bunch of slop sitting in there so we got ourselves a what I would consider more common size for the metrics uh, we got the M6 down here which is a 10 millimeter if I'm correct uh, we got a M8 here which uh, I believe would be a 12 millimeter head and we got a M10 which is probably closer to a 15 I believe or a 16 and uh, yeah so let's take this guy and put some rib nuts in it so let's start off with the M6 because that's the one that's already sitting in a tool there um, I'm kind of trying this for the first time I like to do stuff on camera for the first time when I'm doing these type of demonstrations just because um, me figuring it out might help you figure it out along the road so I think we just kind of might need to back this in a little bit because it's a smaller one there we go so you make it so you kind of get a good bite on the actual riv nut I did forget to mention too there are if I could get it to focus there are graduations on here uh, that the manual doesn't say anything about these graduations so I think it's just kind of a kind of a figure it out as you go type thing and when you're inserting these riv nuts you don't want to over torque them because what will happen is they'll actually kind of kink over and it'll um, cause the riv nut well the actual sheet metal or the metal inside here to, to kink over and then it'll make it so you can't get this thing out and then you screw the threads up on it and I seen a guy do that and I said yeah, either they're not structural they're only holding light stuff for the most part so you really don't need a reef on them you just kind of need them to be in there and not be loose from my experience so we're gonna stick that guy in there um, and I think we want to go the other way Gotta get it started first. There we go. And once you get it started, you just kind of. It's really hard to do this on camera. Kind of hold it and give it a. Give it a 1 4 there. Still a little loose. Let's give it a little bit more. And one more for good luck. We'll back her off. I believe once you get it loose. We just kind of take this guy, a little fiddly again, doing it on camera. And yeah, not bad at all. Kind of went a little offset. Again, I'm doing it on camera, so you gotta, you gotta give me a little bit of leadway here. But yeah, there you go. Now you have an M6 bolt that you could screw into a piece of sheet metal. Let's try the next size, which would be an M8. So let's get the M8 rivet nut ready to go. And this is basically how you take this thing apart, crack the uh, jam nut loose, take this off. This slides out the rear. And we'll grab the M8 one. We'll slide it back in there. Tighten this whole thing down. There's a little bit of adjustment on the end of this too. Depending on how deep you want it to go. From my experience, you could probably probably just find going to its uh, deepest setting there. And, uh, yeah, it's all set up and ready for the next one. All right, so again, put the old rivet nut in there. Insert into the hole. This time I'm not going to talk so much so I can see if I can get a good one. I doubt it. This, by the way, it's <laughs> my setup here. That's a little better, I think. And it's actually, 
not hard to do at all. And there we go. You see it kind of right there. Got that that rollover. Come on, focus. There you go. So that's inserted. Click the ratchet the other direction. Get it loose. And then you back it out. Yes, I actually did good with that one. <laughs> it's amazing what happens, how well I could work when I shut up and just do the job. So, uh, yeah, let's go move on to the uh, M10 one. This one, I drilled all these out with, uh, with a cone bit. And this one, I went a little, little overboard. So, uh, let's see how forgiving these things are for <laughs> people like me who are rushing. All right, well, we got the M10 all set up and ready to go. Um, I, I forgot to mention, these little knobby things are plastic. I mean, I really don't see you having any problems with it. This just should be mentioned. I mean, it would be nice if they were metal, but, I mean, look, you got to save money somewhere on the thing, I guess. So, uh, let's get the... I'm going to have to do a little adjusting on this because the M10's a lot... Bigger or longer, I should say, and I just tighten that. All right, there you go. Got the M10 in there. Let's insert in the wobbly hole that I accidentally drilled. Let's see if we get this thing to see. Like I said this kit does go up to 12, so this is the second to the largest one they make in this kit. And yapping again, I got it to go in off-centered. It does seem to actually hold. And yeah, I got it off-centered again. But, it's certainly in there, so I'll give myself credit for that. And I think the fact that I over size that hole is probably another reason why this thing kind of kind of cocked off center but uh yeah so now we got a a plate that's got an m6 m8 and an m10 uh threaded holes in it one thing i will say uh if you ever need to remove one of these it's stripped out or what have you uh the easiest way to do is just kind of get an oversized drill drill that flange away and then put your bolt in there as best you can. You don't even really need to screw it in because you're going to trash it anyway. Yeah, put your bolt in there and just give the thing a whack with a hammer and it just pops right through. So, um, yeah, that's about it for this guy. Let's close it out. So, there we go. That is the Toolret TR21 Rivet Nut Installer. Um, yeah, I mean, just out of the package and using it those couple of times, I could tell that it solves a lot of the problems I had with, with this particular one. Uh, form factor, ease of use, and uh, pretty much everything. I I'm pretty sure once I get this thing using out in the field, it it'll do me just fine. Especially if I'm not recording myself trying to put a riv nut into a tiny piece of sheet metal. <laughs> that was operator error. I'm, I'm pretty sure once I get it, like you know, fast onto something and I'm holding it, and the thing that I'm trying to put the rivet nut in isn't walking around my bench, it'll work out pretty good. So um, yeah, I I think I'll get some mileage out of this. Even the people on Amazon. Seem, seem to like this. There was a couple of low one or two star reviews on the thing and uh, both of them I could tell that they just were not using the tool right and that's why that's why it broke but um yeah speaking of Amazon I'll leave a link down in the description uh, you can click on that if you would like to check this out for yourself uh, as always anything goes wrong with it in the next year or so if I don't make a video on it I'll put it in the description and update update what my final thoughts on are for this uh the old astro 1427 that's going to go in a trash can as soon as i'm done uh downloading all of this uh video onto my computer for editing and um yeah i think that's about it for this guy uh, questions comments concerns leave them down in the old comment section as always i'll do my best to get back to you i'd like to thank you for watching there you go